step plus i mean i've also uh in the last stream i, I pretty much like did all the foundation work of uh of this guy so it really feels like what's remaining to do is um is kind of like just calibrating but just really going with the feel that's more of what i wanted to say more going with the feel than just like following like a certain like recipe of like detail passes and, and whatnot because the time that i spent to um just like place all those those layers here like the micro detail then the like the first pass for like skin direction detail uh the the the, the, the grain noise then the uh, medium detail noise it's just helping to kind of like like know where my detail is and the rest of this new layer on top is really like the one where i actually just like accentuates all the detail that i find should pop more and uh it really gives like the final look I did a little bit of of it in my last stream, but this is really like the stream where I will like dedicate myself to just do that. And uh, like you said, Mo, it's um, it's uh, it's really uh, more like of a like a in the zone kind of a thing. So it's the kind of like moment where I can actually also be much more chatty because uh, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's being in the zone and whatnot. I'm working on the, like an area that like we'll never see for this character, maybe because of uh, the the way the design is going to be later. Like he has uh, all of his, um, like the collar is like hiding all of that, but I'm still taking a bit of time just because I'm having fun doing it. Also, I'm having like a pretty, uh, pretty relaxing soundtrack right now. For those who want to be in the same mood as I am, I'm actually listening to the soundtrack of uh, Near Automata, which is just a fantastic soundtrack. Very ambiance and moody and uh, very good. I I I love that game so much and it has to do a lot with the uh the ambiance actually ambiance music fighting gameplay is it's cool uh characters a designer I am actually also uh, I like him It's really a nice uh, really nice game uh the story man the story is really good you wouldn't think that the a game with like upskirt upskirt characters would actually have a pretty uh, like interesting and deep uh lore well not only lore eh, but like story and all that stuff very inspiring i find to be honest You go for the butts and you stay for the story. I think I actually already said that once. <laughs> I'm rehashing uh, old commentary that I did on my uh, first streams.
so yeah for those who um for those who might be joining uh have joined recently um i am working on a frog character which um my inspiration is frog from chrono trigger if he was in the world of elden ring which I just finished playing recently and loved it, so I'm pretty inspired by it. All right, we're uh, we're a decent uh, amount of people right now. It's pretty interesting. Cool frog, thanks, Marmax. I'm glad you like it. I always work with the um with a morph target applied even like on top of having a layer because um it's going to happen uh, uh sometimes that I actually will kind of like see if like I was better off like just with my iteration from before so um and it actually like helps me to be a little bit more like free flow because I know I can pretty much like erase something if I don't like it. Like for example, I added some these bumps here, which I'm like, hmm, not kind of like thinking that maybe uh it's not like a really a good touch. Makes him makes him feel older that I want so to be able to revert back. It's kind of like a good thing. Hey Marco, ready to do some sculpting again? Hey Tetsuo, your model is looking great. Thanks, thanks. So a lot of what I'm doing right now is I'm actually using dam standard to kind of like accentuate um, some of the shapes at the same time, maybe creating, well, sometimes creating like, uh, like details, but um, mostly it's because if you look at like the head, the top of the head is you got some shapes in there, right? But there's not much like readability for the shapes. And although maybe that's that could be like the realistic surface of like the head of a frog, um, like I will want to add just some like some more like 
definition, let's say, even if it's not realistic, um, I'm not saying that it, it is or is not realistic. I'm really just saying that um, um, I, I do personally uh, like to exaggerate um, the shapes a little bit more. So like at the top here, what I just did, if I do like a before after, you see it was like a bit flatter here. Oops, well, let's look at it with the texture. But like this little addition here, just like kind of like yeah, accentuates things. Uh, I like doing that. What alpha you used? Can you show it, please? Uh, well, just look at the stream from before. I showed that it was dedicated to the alphas and everything. So you'll have all your answers uh, there. But they're they're like alphas that I found uh, on the internet somewhere, or that somebody gave to me. You know? Like I wouldn't be surprised that they're actually like from like a popular uh, alpha pack or something. the middle here I'll probably remove my symmetry because uh, if you're using too much symmetry at some point it becomes really obvious when you're near the the middle and having a bit of a asymmetry uh, never hurt it anyone I'm actually pressing very lightly on the uh, on the brush by the way on the pen I mean just because otherwise I would need to reduce the rate like with like this big of a radius I would need to reduce the intensity of the brush and I kind of like don't want to have to do that just to save on time so I see that that might be like too too deep. There's a morph target. Boom. Actually, you know what? I'll reduce the intensity. I feel like I've been Hi, you created the base mesh in ZBrush or another program? Everything in ZBrush, baby. I'm practically 100% ZBrush. Often what I'll do is I'll reduce my subdivision levels. Um, if I want to get rid like of a get rid of a big 
shape without destroying my micro shape, I'll simply like reduce my subdivision levels to be able to make modifications without affecting the uh, micro detail. So if you get rid of the micro detail on your on your mesh, either by removing the layer that it's on or reducing the subdivision level, it's actually a good way to preserve what's on the uh, higher subdivision levels. Hey there, Marco. Are there any common mistakes you see artists make when trying to add skin detail? Well, like I said on my last stream, I find that the um, one of the most well, one of the 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 the, the, the thing that I notice um, is sometimes people forget levels of details and uh, like frequencies of details, and um, that's something that I'm. Um, like uh, I think is really important to take in consideration because like, for example, like uh, just a qu not, I don't want to deep dive too much into it since I explained it last stream, but just for example, like, so you have your characters here, your character here, basically you have very low frequency of details. Let's just call them levels of details. You have very low levels of details. Like for example, the, the just the shape itself is a level of detail, and then like you have this those damn standards uh, strokes, which are a much higher level of details. But like you see, like here you have like a flat surface, and then you have like those micro details, and it's not how most organic things are. There's like much more levels of details in between like for example if i add this this is like an even smaller detail so like a it's a very uh, high level of detail so let's say that the shape of the head is like one one and twos or threes um the little like grain here could be like 10 let's say and those little damn standard brush strokes are maybe like eight well you see we're missing like four five six uh seven nine levels of detail so like you see like this layer here is already getting like a little bit more of the details but like you see like this layer here is pretty much like hitting like the level four five six around the, around this um and it's really the addition of like everything on top of each other that really like fulfills um all the levels of detail that are necessary to create the uh, richness of of the, 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 the of the character, right? And uh, like things don't need necessarily to be like bumpy like this to be to be satisfying with the level of details, but there is there's something to it that is a constant on every uh, for every character, though. So. So I would say that this is something that I notice uh, a lot. So you kind of like have to an analyze your subject and kind of like check if like you've been maybe neglecting on like a level of detail, like one that maybe doesn't really like attract that much attention, but that like it, it, in his subtlety is actually doing a lot for for the, the 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 character like exactly like my my third layer no not my third my fourth yeah well maybe not the fourth one uh which one was it again mm, i think i merged it with something else but yeah i think my fourth layer was like one that was a bit more subtle but for me like added uh, a lot so yeah But you see, like for this guy right here, I I find that the level of like the 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 levels of detail are um, 
I find that they're mostly um, cur like okay. Uh, what what's remained for me is more like blending everything, because although you, I have placed different levels of detail, I just want to make sure that they actually have like something that blends them together correctly. Um, it gives them like a sense in between and sometimes just by going by hand and just like adding some masses, some details, some movements, kind of like just like blends them together. And uh, yeah, sometimes by adding those details, I kind of like realize that I've been a bit shy on other details. So it actually gives me the opportunity to um, give me the opportunity to like also intensify some things. Okay, what approach do you take when giving feedback to your artist? Um, what approach do I take? Well, I really go with like my gut, like my feeling of like what they created. Like I know what's the the goal. I know what the the client wants, and um, and uh, I try to see like what what was the intention of my artist and how. I can actually use that and satisfy like the, the also like the client. Uh, and if I really have a feeling that something's not working, then I might actually uh, kind of like start to suggest the artist to do some things um, to help. So, and by giving feedback, like paint overs and that sort of stuff. Um, if at a certain point, if it really doesn't work, I'll sculpt over, or if it's just much easier to sculpt over than to explain, then I'll sculpt over for sure. But um, I think that something that's actually really important is to kind of like let the artist do like what he does and not micromanage necessarily like all the results and the technique and everything. Um, so it's really like a matter of understanding like what's really critical, what's really important to um, to give what the client needs, right? Plus, I mean, at some point, the client's going to have also like their say in, in what they want. And after working for a while with the client, you kind of like get what the client wants. So, uh, and the artist at a certain point will also kind of like naturally understand what the client wants and adjust its technique, his or her technique to it. Um, but I think that the role of an, an like a art director or team lead in regards to like character sculpting and and whatnot is uh, it's really like an in between, like a teacher of a, a technique, but also understanding your client's needs and also understanding like what's your artist's sensibility and understanding also that an artist needs to kind of like put of like themselves into the uh, the craft so you can't always just like ask them to be someone else right you kind of like need to uh, let them be a bit so and that's something that I learned with time because at first I was really micromanaging everybody and making sure they do exactly the way that I wanted and at some point I just came to a realization that first of all I'm not always right so you have to take that in consideration and also that um, really how much is it, is it going to help? Because the more you, you actually say it, you tell someone what to be and how to be, the less they're going to be happy. Like some people, they like to learn for sure. I think everybody likes to learn and get better. But at some point, you also have to respect that an artist also like has some preference and sensibilities. And you have to also respect this or else the artist might just become like just 
feeling like almost having like identity crisis. <laughs> and then they and then they grab a huge buster sword, they spike their blonde they they blood they bleach their hair, they spike them up, they put like a soldier garb and then they go and they go and they join Avalanche in Midgar. There we go. Yeah. Did you like that story arc right there? Hey Marco, hey Gus. Kermit's look different here. Kermit is getting pretty badass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Kermit. <laughs> Part of me wanted to start doing like a Kermit voice imitation, but I just realized that I actually don't know how to do it. <laughs> so. Uh... Right now, my favorite voice voice imitation to do is uh, Mickey Mouse. Because my my kid just watch, like loves to watch Mickey Mouse. He just loves Mickey Mouse, and it like makes him flip out when I do the voice. It's it's super cute. I love it. Uh, very cool insight. Thanks. I'll definitely look over your past streams too. Uh, yeah, sure, man. That's a uh, ma'am or woman. Uh, it's um basically why I all I record them all. For posterity's sake. But also, I mean, because I, I say so many things that, like, sometimes it's just easier to say, like, I oh, just check that stream. Like, I explain it completely there. All right, let me just take a look. I've been uh, kind of, like, in the zone for a while. Let me just see what's the damage I caused. I'll add another, another layer, just in case, because uh, I, I kind of like where I am right now. So I want to be able to revert to this exact point. Thanks for the follow. Let's add a little bit more of uh, those uh, 
definition of mid uh, middle mid level shapes around here. Oh my god, I've been in the zone, eh? Not talking at all for uh, a good while now. <laughs> Is there somebody who actually has a, a question? Even very trivial to get me to talk. It can be a deep subject also. Or it can be as trivial as what's your favorite Power Ranger? Actually, don't ask, don't ask me that question. I have no idea. <laughs> I watched Power Ranger when I was a very small child, and I actually don't remember much from it. I just remember throwing a tendrum to my, my dad because... I wanted to watch the episode, but we needed we needed to go buy something at the store, and I actually like threw a huge fit. And then we arrived at home, and I could I was able to watch the end of the episode, and 
<laughs> the episode like really sucked. <laughs> I remember the episode was not good. So I was like, oh boy. All right. I feel ashamed. Or whatever uh, shame is for like a small kid. I don't know if it's really uh, an emotion can be can be processed by a kid of that age, but uh, I guess. I guess so, I don't know. Uh, probably a dumb question, but why have you done the details separate from the body instead of directly on top of it? Why have I done the detail separated from the body? Mm, I'm not sure what you mean, the detail separated from the body. Like the detail is on the character. Oh, wait, okay. So cause this, it doesn't exist under here. I guess that's what you mean. Because the, the like I separated the character in, in um, different subtools just to make things lighter overall. It's it's hard to to maneuver a subtool that has um, that has millions of polygon on it. So when you can actually divide it in pieces, I find that it's a it's a, an opportunity to not miss. And since this character has a scarf, well, I know that I can actually cut. A mesh around here, so it's uh, just to make sure that like my 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 software s runs as smoothly as possible. Like I have a good machine, but I've always had those like best practices um, to make sure that like my scenes they stay uh, light. Like I will like there's a lot of layers right now, but like at some point I will actually even like collapse the layers into like really like the, the groups I want to keep together and keep separate just in order to have less layers so I have the file that is not as big. And I end up like having like files of like millions and millions of polygon but not waiting like waiting like like so much. So uh yeah. Question for you. Top five snacks when watching TV. <laughs> All right. Well, disclaimer, I don't really. Um, first of all, I watch. I rarely watch TV. I actually usually watch TV when I work, so I don't really eat. Um, but still, sometimes I'll I'll go in front of the TV and watch something, uh, especially when it's, when it's a TV show that I really want to uh, digest correctly. Um, like there's like Better Call Saul that just started again. Watched a uh, a few episodes yesterday with my uh, with my wife. Um, she was eating sunflower seeds, but I was not eating anything because we just came back from a restaurant. We were celebrating uh, nine years together. And it was our anniversary yesterday. Um, so yeah, I was pretty full, but yeah, no, so let's say, let's say what rarely, but when it happens, uh, what snacks do I eat? Well, one of the, one of the, the one that I eat the most, I'd say would probably be, um, cheddar popcorn. This is pretty much my, my favorite popcorn because it's like, it's like, I guess like the least caloric of like snacks or it could be like without fall like without falling into like the kind of snacks that just don't doesn't taste like anything so uh just just for to make like a in quotes healthy decision i guess like i will i'll go for like popcorn um so cheddar popcorn maybe followed by like uh buttered popcorn uh, but I'm not like I'm not gonna go for like unflavored popcorn because at this point is like I'm like I still want to live. <laughs> uh, but um, other if I actually also includes like the one that I really don't really do any much, but I still 
like sometimes maybe do because I just love it so much. Um, I remember that one of my favorite, like <laughs> at some point I was snacking on on olives. Like I actually like had like a jar of olives and uh, I was just eating that. And uh, yeah, I remember like really liking it. So that was a that was a good one. Um, I I've ooh, what you got here? Stoic. That's pre. That's very appreciated. Awesome. Thanks for that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll jump to your uh, jump to your question real quickly, real quick. Um. So uh, yeah, what, I I really liked um, um, sour cream chips. Yeah, this one I really liked, and uh, also I love um, almonds and uh, peanuts and that sort of stuff. Um, it, it's hard to have them as a snack though because uh, it's kind of like uh, it's really filling, right? So I guess maybe like cashews. Not cashews, sorry, um, pistachios, because uh, you have to remove the shell. Actually, you know what? Pistachios is one. Yeah, that's a really good answer because it really takes time to like remove the shell and everything. So you can't like just munch like crazily on them. So you kind of like have to take a bit of your time while, while uh, eating them. That's a good one. Yeah, pistachios. So yeah, there you go. That's a couple right there. I like those kind of like questions that are that doesn't have to do with 3D. So uh... <laughs> all right. Um, how do you end up combining the mesh together with the body part with the detail obviously you can't use dynamesh or you'll lose all the detail well i don't need to i don't need to do what you just said i'm just always going to keep it as like separate meshes because there's going to be like clothing on top and everything so who cares maybe uh Maybe you can send me a follow-up question if uh, it still doesn't make sense for you. No. Uh, Stoic. Uh, hey, Marco, what's your favorite way of storytelling in your art? I'm, ta I'm taking Simon Lee's sculpting uh, course, and there's a big emphasis on story-driven details. Um, yeah, well, I mean... Um, like uh, for me, um, I don't always tell a story through my art. I, I think I, I, I end up doing it, I guess, because like every decision that I take um, is uh, has like a story behind it. Uh, thanks for the follow, by the way. Like, um, but sometimes they're maybe not like super obvious. Like for example, the um, my Archangel series and and me and my uh, Four Horsemen series, they actually have a story to them, and the story is basically um, a mix of like some like moral story I'm trying to create in the background, some lore that I actually have in my head or sometimes even written, um, just to actually like know that there's like a possible world where like they exist. Uh, give them like a class, a, a role, a, uh, goals, that sort of stuff. And um, and when I actually comes time to make choices visually, well, I take that in consideration. Plus, I take in consideration the the main source of inspiration. The the four horsemen are from like uh, Christian mythology, so um, so they like it is. Um, like there's already stuff written about them, so I take that also in consideration. Um, but but yeah, the um, the sorry, there's like a song that's so distracting because let me just skip that song. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah, like in the way that I uh, tell story. Uh, which is, by the way, like the kind of character that I do, they don't have like the same emphasis on story as um, like some other artists. Like one artist that I really like for the way she's telling like stories and stuff inside of her sculpting is uh, um, uh, 
just wait, that, that utter song is really bugging me. There you go. So what I was saying, um, yeah, stories, stories and, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, one artist that I actually, uh, really like about the way she tells stories in her sculpt, her sculpts is, uh, Maria Pan, uh, Panfilova. I, uh, find that she's, um, she's pretty good at, um, well, she, she makes it a point. Like, a lot of like what she's sculpting is like a lot of like a scene, like a moment in something. And instantly, like when you have like a scene and a moment, you, you, there is a story that's clear behind, right? Whereas like, if you do like a character in a pose like this, you can tell a story through like, like who they like, uh, thanks for the follow. Uh, like the way that like, I like combine like the styles of armor and everything. There's like a, a certain story to it. Like, for example, let's say I talk about uh, like this character here. If you look at the, the, the concept that I have, um, you can see that there are uh, different pieces of armor that's coming from different sets of armor. So why? Well, one of the reason was because in the... Um, the original design here uh, there were some color choices from the character that i wanted to keep and some of them i found was not really fitting with what one with the, the other so it actually gave me the idea of like actually having this character of frog and elden ring be um yeah, thanks for the follow um this character be like recon reconstructed well not re reconstructed but like um he basically actually have has had to get pieces of armor from different places to get his full armor back and why well maybe because like he was defeated at some point and was left to um to die and was badly hurt and his armor was damaged and everything so after he got back into like fighting form or whatever like well he had to do with the with what he could find right so which gives him gives him the like that kind of like ronin uh like look to him but also uh that, that felled knight like fallen knight ish aspect to it which is also why the cape is the cape is destroyed why the his sword is broken and why he's actually fighting with a broken sword but the the choice of having him fighting with a broken sword also has to do with the fact that the sword has a lot of meaning to him and like he'd rather fight using that sword even if it's an handicap just because like the sword has been with him and it's re really representative of something that he's holding there. And while I say all of that, for those who played Chrono Trigger, you'll notice that all of those themes are somewhat already existent in the character of Frog from Chrono Trigger because he's he's a squire that, um, was he a squire? I'm pretty sure he was a squire to, to Cirrus. Anyways, he was a squire and he was defeated. His his knight was killed and basically Frog is just living in the forest with this curse to be to like to be a frog. So he was not a frog first. Wait, was Cirrus the name of the knight or was Cirrus the name of Frog before he became Frog? I'm pretty sure yeah, no, his name was Glenn. Yeah, there you go. Yeah before he became frog so see that there's also the, there's already this story to it so and since this is like um more like of a recreational uh project for me to um just kind of like have do a fan art of frog but also like in in a, a, a world in the world of elden ring just because i'm i really like those two things um so like this basically like my goal here is more of a like a bard in a sense kind of like to continue a bit of this the story and the things that i've seen and i've heard like it's not really like creating things right it's a lot of like just having fun with it all right so let's look at before and after like this whole like blending layer pass 
Oops. All right. So on the left is without the blending. On the right is with the blending. So yeah, that's uh, that's better like this for sure. Now, to what point do I want to add to continue to add details to that? Hmm, I understand, though, if you were to merge the mesh, how would you go about it? Uh, reprojection, just recreating a mesh that doesn't have any hole and reprojecting all of that. I uh, think your monkey TV uh, that head looks absolutely awesome. Mad details. I'm 31 and just started 3D modeling. No previous uh, experience. I hope to get uh, that good someday. Well, it's all about passion and time and everything. So who cares for your age? As long as you're able to put the time and you have the passion, you'll be able to do a lot with that. Uh, I'm. I was listening to a podcast recently about. Um, did I just merge both of my layers together? Yes, okay, I did. Um, I just I just uh, listened to a podcast recently that was about it's a it's it's actually it's actually somebody called Doctor K, and the podcast is like uh, Healthy Gamer GG. I think that's the name of his podcast, and uh, it's like a basically it's a doctor who's also like a, a gamer and uh, like many things. And uh, it's pretty interesting. I just started to listen to that. And um, uh, the episode that I, I listened to was one about um, the fear of starting something, uh, the start to starting something new because uh, because of the feeling that like you've wasted your time and everything. And uh, I, I feel that it's actually really great to hear about somebody kind of like letting you know that no, you're not losing your time and you're it's absolutely legit to want to start something new, to try something new. And um, like this, there is the, there is the, like a big uh, stigma in our world that actually be, be pretty much like says that you need to have like the one career and spend many years in it and uh it's um like i'm not i'm not gonna like s talk about what he talked in the podcast because i don't think i would be able to really do it justice but um basically the idea is just that like you carry you carry so many things with yourself when you go from like one job to the other and basically like some jobs are harder to learn than others for sure, but really the factor that like makes you good at what you're doing or happy at what you're doing is not the amount of like time you've spent on it, but the amount of like attention you put to it. And um, so, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you're 31, you're just started in that. That's, that's, that's awesome. I started my journey at like 22 years old and like, are you 23? 23 22 and uh like in in some people's eyes it could actually uh feel like it's actually also late uh because uh i mean some people they start very young at it uh i mean i was not really like a accomplished artist in any way uh before like i've always drawn I always had fun, but never really had any like academic studies and stuff or whatever. And I started all of that pretty, um, pretty late, but I loved it so much. And I was so passionate that I actually spent a lot of my energy and time on it. And, um, yeah, and I'm okay with how it happened, even if I so in some way wish I would have started sooner. And the reason why I wished I would have started sooner is just basically because, like, I knew since I was, like, 13, 14 years old that, like, that's what I wanted to do, do something artistic in, in like, the world of video games or or whatever. So, like, I what I really wish is just that I've, I, I would have had the, um, the tools at my disposal to, like, kind of, like, help me to make that decision sooner. But at the same time, it's like, well, what did I, what did I do while I was, um, while I was, um, well, not doing 3D when I was younger? Well, 
I was developing social skills because I was working at the government as an IT technician. So going to people to people that I don't know and trying to reassure them with their their issues, trying to help them and that sort of stuff. And you know what? Like I uh, it it I could make a case that um, that's maybe what's making me uh, somebody that actually has uh, ease in talking to clients and and figuring out what they need and and taking it seriously and and doing my best to make sure that they're happy like well you know what maybe that my IT technician job um helped me with that plus um I was also a musician before I was a 3D artist and um and I I think like I understood a lot about like rhythm and balance and and a lot of uh, those things uh with uh music plus also, when I learned music, I learned it by myself. And later, I started to actually take classes and everything. And I realized that I kind of like learned music kind of like backwards. Um, and I, I kind of like didn't really help myself by doing that. So when I started uh, learning 3D, I really took it really seriously to study correctly the... Um, the um the fundamentals without like really trying to rush too much uh, rush too much ahead and um i think that that also really like helped me so it's kind of like learning how to learn basically and uh it really did uh help me at um i find like retrospectively i think uh in hindsight, like we say, uh, I think it did uh, help me. And uh, it's kind of like saying, uh, like when I was in, in school, like I was doing my best to have like good grades and, and whatnot. Uh, although like I, it was really hard for me to, to concentrate in class because I was just like, like I'm not clinically ADHD, but uh, like I'm, I have like a mild level of it uh, enough so that like it's just super hard for me to to listen like to something with, that I cannot interact with and uh, at school I had kind of like problems listening in class and stuff but you know what I was doing my homework, so I was trying my best and um, although I, I was not necessarily always the person with like the best grades um, I still had like this kind of like I don't know this um desire to to do a correct job at it and maybe that this also like thought me something in the long run so basically like this is one aspect of what the the guy was talking about on the podcast dr k uh it's basically that like you're you're carrying with you like so many things and some are really nuanced and some are it, they're not really like obvious that it actually is helping you but but it it does so there's no really like there's never really any like like severe waste and even if like you really truly think that like you've wasted your your life and your time and your this and your that well it's like at some point you kind of like have to also be like honest with like yourself and like if you needed that time for yourself because you were not ready to plunge in anything, well, it's fine. That's just it's just what happened at that time. And, and when you feel that it's you're ready to to make a difference and to change, well, then there you go. You, you go at that point, but you can't also you cannot like force anything or else like it won't you won't help yourself. It won't come naturally, and like you won't get the results that you are like that you want. So there's also that to take in consideration. It's almost like akin to um, like stopping like a bad habit. Like I was um, for a brief for a brief time, I was a smoker, and um, at some point, I actually like just I wanted to stop, but it was kind of hard because I was like like truly feeling it. And at some point, after talking to like one of my friend, and he made me realize like some stuff, and it kind of like seeped in at this point and it kind of like felt more that i was like ready to make a change and make that sacrifice and uh i felt like it was the right time and i did it 
and uh, and I'm not a smoker anymore. So, and uh, I'm not even missing it. So I'm all of like all of that because I I uh, I waited to be ready. I was honest with myself. All right, I'm kind of like do doodling a lot right now. <laughs> I, I might actually be overdoing it. Let's merge those two layers and see. See if like I overdid it somewhere because uh, I think I'm kind of like ready to move on. <laughs> um, like you see, it could be all right for the moment like this. Is there maybe something now that I actually blended all of that? Is there a detail that maybe I am missing? And this can be noticed if I actually maybe play with my other layers here. So, like those bumps. Do I feel like there's too many of those bumps now? Or not enough, actually? No, I guess it's fine. This layer here of little like bumps and dots. There could be a bit more. Oh, this is my pre uh, wrinkle pass. There might be a bit too much in some areas, maybe, but not that much. And this is the micro detail. No, this one is uh, this one's fine. So maybe it's just like the little bumpy pass. Like I'll I'll just add a layer and see if I actually need to add a little bit bit more of those like bumpy things. Um, so I'll just go grab my alpha here and yeah, let's read some uh, some of the chat at the same time. Oops, nope. It's not here, it is um, in pores. Pores, pores, pores. There you go, this one here. All right, like this. Spray mode, not symmetrical, not so strong. Oops, all right, let's go in modifier, put the flow way down. Scale difference, not that much. And placement, let's keep it to 0.5. All right, that's still too strong. So was it, yeah, yeah, let's just read some chat before I lose everything. Uh, if I were to merge everything into a single subtool, I would probably retopo it, export a new mesh to ZBrush, use HGeometry to project everything, single mesh in the board, and then, I mean, my machine would probably die in the middle of the process, but I think that's a possibility. Or just, just lower the subdivision level of like all your subtools that you want to make be one subtool together dynamesh that in a low resolution low, low resolution Z remesh it and then reproject over all of your subtools to get your details back thanks for answering all my questions love your work by the way it's amazing you are a huge inspiration and motivation hey it's my pleasure uh thanks for saying that lord bane uh, ah, the 10k hour, the buckle. Yeah, <laughs> of course. How many hours did you spend daily on learning 3D at the beginning of your journey? Oh my god, every waking hours. <laughs> I was going to school. I went to school for just one year. Um, it was a short program. But then when I came back home, I did all my own work and then I studied uh, tutorials and that sort of stuff. Yeah, thanks for the follow. 
So and I sank in the like so many hours, so many hours. I spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time, but I loved it. Uh, what software you're using? Uh, this is called ZBrush. Um, June, uh, you seem to say very motivating, inspirational stuff every stream. <laughs> well, thanks for saying that. Um, I don't consider myself as um, somebody that has like so many cool stories or like such an interesting life, but I do have, uh, I do reflect on, I do reflect on, um, uh, on on aspects of my life and um i'm not that much of a like uh, i'm not so different from like anybody else and I, I find it like maybe the thing that i've learned well if i talk about it maybe that they actually can uh they can uh, resonate for somebody and that's what's important i think uh, about sharing stories and thanks for the follow so uh yeah, so I'm happy that uh, I'm happy that it makes you happy. There you go. Uh whoops. I'll just get rid of a bit of uh, some of the detail as a just a tad overkill. Yeah, that's probably all right. So I'll merge it with my other bumpy layer. I should have named my layers to be able to recognize them more easily. But I'm just too much in the zone, man, to do that. I can't. The zone is calling me. Um... Um, what about a throat pouch or whatever they are calling frogs? Uh, well, I kind of like put a bit of volume here, like a, a frog when it's actually not uh, croaking or whatever. I'm not sure if that's the word for, for the sound they make. I think it's croaking. Anyway, whatever. Like when they make that, that kind of thing. Um, I checked and uh, the, their throats are like super not inflated, but like when they do it it's inflated a lot so i kind of like did like a mid a mid level of it um uh, i kind of like to retopo things it works like uh, therapy uh, yeah i know sometimes uh, retopo is a uh, pretty good to empty your empty your mind it's kind of like meditation uh, hey all awesome work man thanks uh uh, same boat as me. I am 30, just getting into 3D sculpting. Good luck on your journey. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. There you are. Um, I used to make the same mistake when modeling. Yeah. Oh, I don't consider it really a mistake. It's more like a, I get like I get around it anyway. Like the the amount of time that it's that it saves me to name things. I, it's not really like something that's so important for me. If I'm to actually give the file to somebody afterwards so that they actually understand what they, they're going to find in the layers, I might do it. When, when it's just for me, uh, I can simply know what the layer is by doing like like on, off, on, off. And naming them sometimes feel more like a waste of time than just like doing the on, off, on, off thing. But it's objective. It really depends uh, what you prefer to do. Uh, anyways, yeah. All right. I guess that for the moment I will call this area done, or maybe you know what? Just, just for the sake of it, I'll actually kind of like do a little bit of detail inside of the nose, just to feel like the. It's not just like a, a simple like.
But yeah, to come back to us uh, earlier when we were talking about storytelling and everything. Um, so like like I said, it's it's much easier to tell a story when you like you're making like a, you're having like a scene like a diorama or something like that. It's kind of like the the point of it, uh, which makes for for great 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 things. Um, but um, I I am. Um, at some point, uh, I'll be actually kind of like, maybe like talking a bit more about the stories behind the uh, the Four Horsemen and uh, the Archangels, because I did write a lot of like, a lot of stuff and a lot of is in my head as well. Like sometimes I just daydream about like the story, their purpose, their goal, the, the even, there's even like a, like a relate, like a relation to the world. Oh, I was not in symmetry damn ah whatever and um and yeah um things go like pretty um pretty deep in terms of like like the character's motivation and and their place in the world and that sort of stuff and i'm creating also like different classes like those are two just two classes, but there is going to be like many. Um, this is a project that's going to last like a long time, and at some point, to kind of like not have people only like guessing by the look of characters, which sometimes can be like not really like enough to really explain like the depth of things. Uh, I'll probably like have like maybe I'll create like some website that's gonna that's gonna be used as like kind of like a like a lore. Uh, lore bible or whatever uh, whatever you know? kind of like explaining where the characters come from the state of the world this and that and uh, I really love talking about that story it's just I'm not really ready to, to make it like public or anything for many reasons one of them is that uh, well Copyright, trademark, blah blah blah. It's something that's really close to my heart. I don't want to just like divulge it like this. But the other one is also that uh, uh, it's still like work in progress. I feel like I need to solidify some of the beats of the uh, of the whole like story and everything before I can um, really talk about it. But in the meantime, before I actually before I actually make it public, well, I can at least, um, I can at least uh, work on the designs of the characters. And I don't necessarily feel like I need to say like so much about like who they are. And I kind of like let people like imagine for themselves. And at some point, I'll. Uh, yeah, at some point, I'll. Uh, be more explicit about it. All right. I guess we're yeah. I guess at this point I'm I'm truly fully complete with yeah. With this, with the head, at least for 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 the T pose, right? Because when I'll pose him, I'll actually have to create the scar on his uh, on his eye and kind of like give a bit of a yeah. And by then, I'll might re I might revisit it. All right, cool. There you go. So we have the por the visible portions uh, done. It's cool. There's the arm. This, that's the sculpting of it. It's a decent job. Like there's some, still some stuff that I see, but I'm kind of, I kind of like want to start on something else. So I'll probably start blocking the armor now, or at least like the armors that are symmetrical, because this character I can pretty rapidly go in pose because there's not a lot of symmetry. All right, let's save that. Allure Almanac. Yeah, yeah.
Yes, I do actually. Like for the for the horseman, I I did kind of like write stuff like even stuff that's not really going to be like useful. But I even wrote like which elements would each horseman control if they were to control elements, and it's like it might not even have to do with like the story or my, but I like to classify the characters, especially when I do lineups, like it gives like, first of all, I just do it for fun because I, it's kind of like dungeons and dragon and dragon ish. Uh, sorry. Dun- dungeons and dragony and, um, or kind of like a character sheet or like character customization, whatever from video game. Like I, I love that stuff. I love to, to play Barbie with the characters and uh, just like create them and whatever. And uh, I like doing that. So the, um, when I create a character, I like to do it because I find that it actually in a fun way, it put like meat around the bone. So um, yeah. And I use that to actually also like shame the story around them and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, anyways, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, Mr. Frog. How you doing? Um, all right. So, what are we doing now? Huh? Well, I guess that we're going to create the armor. A central piece here. Nerd. Yes, I am a big nerd. All right, let's go with the armor. Nerd pride, absolutely. I have huge nerd pride. Hey, thanks for the follow. When I was a kid, I was like not really. Uh, I wasn't. I was not really like. Uh, had like I didn't call myself a nerd because I I found it derogative and stuff, and was not really happy with that that name but uh the more and the more i grew and the more i became confident with like with who i am and what i like and honest with who i am and what i like things just started to just become much better and much easier in my life um and um i just started to be super proud of like who i was being a a huge giant nerd so yeah nerd pride for sure Oh yeah, but I I didn't I didn't wait that nerds were considered cool before <laughs> being proud of being a nerd. It actually just it just really just happened naturally. I was just like, yeah, you know what? Kind of like happy with like who I am after all, and uh, let's go nerd power. And uh, yeah, and my wife loves it, and and there you go. So hey, everybody's happy. Actually, I, I um, a little life moral uh, right there. But um, before I uh, before I um, I met uh, before I met my wife, I actually like was dating like uh, like a lot of like different girls and stuff, and I was never necessarily like truly like happy and comfortable. And um, not that they were bad people or anything, but um, it's just that they were not like like i i could i could not like fully be myself with them and um it um i didn't really realize that it was it was bad for me and um because i kind of like was attracted to a certain like type of person and uh that type of person uh was not necessarily uh, good for me or compatible with me. Like I said, where they were not bad people or just not necessarily, uh, like I, I realized that I was not comfortable with them. Like I wanted to be with them because they're like, like I was immature about like what I needed and, and, um, what would make me happy. And I was like chasing something that was not really for me. Um, and the more that I matured, the more that I got 
more uh, wise, that I got wiser, um, the more I realized that um, if I just stop looking for a certain kind of person and I just start to, I just concentrate on like being who I am, uh, I was going to attract uh, people that would actually make me like happy and um and yeah and my uh my my uh, my wife uh now is, is is that person is uh probably the one of the first person that like i was with that i was just fully comfortable being who i was as ridiculous as nerdy as stupid as other adjective um like she was there and she was she liked she liked to be with me so like instantly just made me feel like much more like comfortable and and happy and and a lot of other things became like better about myself just because i was uh with her so um yeah and i've been with her for nine years um as of yesterday so yeah Love you, Macy. <laughs> She's not going to listen to that. Or maybe. I don't think so. It's all right. I tell her in real life. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I think I'm finished doodling around. I'm kind of like wasting my time here. Being yourself is important. Absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone. That's appreciated. Yeah, that's a good. Um, that's a good life life lesson here for sure. At least it's one that uh, helped me. At least I can say that. Yeah. Just being honest with yourself. Because sometimes it's hard. There, there's still some stuff that I'm not like truly honest with myself. And um, sometimes you realize it and then like you can do something about it. But like it starts with just often being honest with yourself. All right, let's do it. Let's start. Let's start separating elements, doing the blockings for for things. So let's start with uh, the body, the armor, the chest piece, whatever. All right, so I guess let's use this mesh here, and let's build with that. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna duplicate it. I'm going to mask. All right, well, let's take this mesh here. Oop. Yeah, he's a tiny bum. He has a cute, uh, he's a, he has a cute, uh, firm butt. A little bit of a little frog tail. I'm actually pretty happy of the shape of the anatomy for this, uh, for this guy here. So 
So I'll just try to get have like a decent shape for this uh, this part here. Actually, a decent shape for the silhouette because I'm going to be uh, Z remeshing this here. I don't know what's happening at the back here. Oh, I think it's just a negative inflate that I should get rid of. Not a negative inflate, but like a, a self inflate, like a self penetrating inflate. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's Z remeasure this. Thousand polys. All right, fine enough, whatever. Actually, you know what? No, I'll put it just a little bit higher temporarily. There we go. Because so I just want to get the correct shape for this first. So the kind of armors that they have is not really like following like the anatomy. At least like uh, his armor in Chrono Trigger. And uh, that those kind of like plates also, they're more like round like this. So I'll just use clay build up to get that shape back a bit. But I might also like kind of like exaggerate the shape to get a bit of that like heroic pose. Have you considered on creating of a Discord server at some point? Well, um, so yeah, yeah, people have been asking me this. It's just that I am not sure how I would be using it. So, for example, if you were to do a sales pitch for me right there and explain the advantages and or the way to use the Discord server and the advantages of using it, I would be actually interested. So please, please tell me. Uh, why did I separate head, body, and arm? Because a subtool, a one subtool with millions and millions of poly is hard to handle more than many subtools with fewer millions of poly. And since uh, there's going to be armor uh, hiding the separations, well, I get to separate it in many areas and all of those areas are going to just help me make sure that I don't get too many millions of polys in there. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to make this armor go over the, the shoulder like this. Change of plan. Um, creating a community. Um, yes, you you're correct. Now my follow up question would be, uh, what's the kind of stuff that people are expecting to see on the Discord? Like, is it almost just like using it as like a newsletter? So like posting, like when I actually like have, have new artwork on the social medias or like uh, just reminding people of my Twitch sessions or if I actually sell something or 
like is it what people are expecting to to, to have with the discord hey talden Well, you know what? I'll think about it. That's, um, could be interesting. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll put a, I'll put, I'll put myself a reminder right here. All right. Thanks for the suggestion. That's, uh, that's appreciated. Uh, thanks for the follow. Yeah, I see what you mean. All right, you've convinced me. You won. <laughs> uh, passive aggressive thing to say. So I'm just creating a shell real quick just to be able to to assign multiple uh, polygroups and just do polish by crisp edges to just kind of like smooth the silhouette of this. I, it's I, this is not necessarily like my my final uh, thickness the final thickness <laughs> that's, that's so stupid the final thickness <laughs> it's really a funny uh funny word funny sequence of word it's the final thickness Um, but, um, but I think if you won't be there and interact with people and answer questions, then I think you don't need one. Um, well, it's true that like, uh, I don't necessarily have all the time in the world and I'm a pretty busy person. So, uh, I don't know, like if people would actually get, uh, bored of, um, me not interacting. So that's something that kind of like, it's kind of like the reason why I did not do, uh, discord. But uh, I don't know. The idea is interesting. But like, yeah, if uh, people are gonna get bored because uh, nothing's happening, then uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, sounds like a porn movie name. The final thickness. Yeah, a pretty epic one. Uh, the Discord. I really appreciate the ones where you can get feedback on work. Oh, yeah. If I start to get, do feedback on work, uh, I'm never going to see the end of it. Like, I would love to be able to do that, but, like, I have to be realistic. I basically give feedback all day long. That's my, my job. So, like, doing it on top of it, like, it's uh, it can get a bit uh, intense. Um, and share memes. <laughs> I love the singing. Eh, thank you. You're too kind. 
uh, sing more for us before we go to bed. <laughs> Jeez, I never knew that you wanted to. Maybe I should sing more. Huh? Maybe that's uh, the next uh, my next uh, venue. Huh? The Chaos Masons Band. I think the stream is very good. Yeah, for that it is. At least I can talk to people and interact with them. But like using the Discord for like a news uh, a newsletter uh, wouldn't be that much of a bad idea actually. Actually, I might still do it even if it's not the most interesting interesting thing. Just to at least like have like another mode of communication with people. Though if you have enough friends on the Discord, it can still be interesting. You don't have much time, but maybe some of your friends do have more time. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe that could be uh, that could be something. Marco Plouffe's personal ASMR stream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is it somebody here that called me the Bob Ross of 3D? Because I, I cannot accept the mantle, but I find it really fucking funny. Especially because, uh, and I said that on a, on, a, on a stream before, but like in real life, I. I'm a pretty loud person. And when my bebe is sleeping, I tend to be a little bit more quiet. Because I do not want the bebe to wake up. Although, I mean, he's like, Asked out right now. Uh, hey, thanks for the follow. Come on. Uh, pa -pa -pum. How um, are you that famous that people call me the Bob Ross of 3D? No, it's just a joke that somebody said on the on the stream right here. I would never pretend to be famous. The day that I start to act like a rock star and a famous person, please somebody slap me across the face. I could never, I could never start to become that kind of like evil. Habulum. Ooh. Did I just get raided? Mr. Liv Living Vertex? Huh? You just raided me, bro. <laughs> oh, that's appreciated. Awesome. Happy little brush. Yeah, exactly. My happy little brush to make my happy little armors and happy little deadly frogs. You are famous to me. Well, you know what? I appreciate that. I appreciate the kindness. I uh, was using the bathroom, just had to say social interaction in one of the high point of Discord. 
<laughs> Good to know. Chase create. Okay. Uh, you can also host contests and have bot designed for specific purpose, like notifying when a stream starts or notifying people when your company generally posts new content online. Yeah, you see that. Um, yeah, that could be cool. I don't know how to create bots and stuff, but like uh, the rest of what you said about like just using it. Uh, thanks for the follow, by the way, and using people for um, just uh, well, not using people, using the platform for um, just like letting people know like that things are up or whatever. That's also something that's I, f I find really interesting. Uh, plus, I mean, I use Discord all the. I, I'm on Discord. I use it so like I would be close to the software. Living for text. Yep, you did. You did it. You did it. What's the quote from uh, from um, Planet of the Ape? We blew it all, or something like that. You really did it. I don't know. Something like that. There's something funny in there. I'm sure something somewhere in there. Uh, Chrono Trigger, yeah, exactly. It's Frog from Chrono Trigger. In the world of Elden Ring. Um, is that part of your night series? Uh, no, this is just a mashup. Just a mashup that I have been uh, thinking of doing for a while. I'm working on the nights uh, during the day and, uh, and as, at nights uh, when I'm not streaming. So, uh, the, yeah, the project for the Knights is, is advancing for sure. For sure. Uh, I hope you don't become too famous, otherwise interacting on stream becomes more difficult. Well, I hope I get a bit more famous. Still. But, like, yeah, no, I know what you mean, because I, 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 I went to go see, like, a couple of, like, other streams, and at some point it gets, like, just, like, Absolute total chaos. But uh, I don't. I don't think I'll ever uh, become of that like level. Because uh, there seems to be a certain pattern for like the very popular streams and stuff, and uh, and uh, I'm not into in that pattern. In that demography, so I think you are in the clear. Are you using Slack at work? Well, some of my some of our clients they're using Slack, so yes, I'm using Slack. Uh, I say it because I think you will become more famous. Well, thank you. I appreciate the the optimism. All right, all right, all right, all right. So you see, that's kind of like uh, somewhat of a good base. Is that the shape that I really want to go for? If I look at the body under, the body adi adi under. Um, there we go. Body adi adi adi. I've been watching way too much RuPaul Drag Race recently. You see, I can probably like try to put the belly in a little bit just to really have like this like apex here near the the pex and the apex near the pex. What? What? Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> the dad in me really loves what just happened right there. By the way, thanks for the follow. Oh, and thanks for the second follow. Um, did you see the Love, Death, and Robot trailer? Well, I've seen the, the season one, uh, which uh, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, some of the stories in there were pretty neat. I liked it. I like that this show exists, actually. It really highlights, like, our... Um, our like craft and industry, so uh, 
Yeah, I'm happy about that. Uh, the best hard surface creator. Hey, Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo, sorry. Um, thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, the fact that I think it's funny shows my age. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, yep, yep. I'm slowly becoming like my dad. Okay. Uh, you know what? I think I can go for that for a moment with the shape. Let's create uh, the shell. Not that much. I have to add ignore group. Boom. There we go. That should be enough for the moment. All right, well, uh, what else will I actually, will I need to model? Um, like the boots are going to be, uh, the boots are going to be made. Uh, in non-symmetry, the legs, I can actually have like a base. A lot of like the armor is not in symmetry, but I still probably going to. Because, hmm. like I said, it's not going to take much time before I actually go in uh, in full symmetry for. I, I go in pose for this character. Now. There's gloves as well. I can probably create like the gloves. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, did you show the process of the frog texture? Yep, in my um. Well, by texture, do you mean the like the geometry, or you mean the color? Because uh, the color, not really, but the geometry uh, detailing, uh, yeah, in my um, my stream from before. So, so there you go. You know, like so you you were asking about the story and that sort of stuff. Well, there you go. I'm going to be using a bit of story right there just for a decision. I have to uh, create a glove for this. Why didn't that work? Why didn't my split work? Fuck. Oh, I think I have a layer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, by the way, why did I have a... Ah, oh, yeah, I was missing uh, this layer. Okay, weird. So, yeah, I'm going to actually like use a bit of like story telling right there for the part of the gloves. So, okay, so why? Um... So technically, all the armor that like he's wearing right now, uh, it's armor that like he could have found on. Uh, why did I lose the color on that thing? Okay, just give me a sec. That was kind of like the tint. I was, well, yeah, whatever. There we go. Let's uh, go with that. Um, okay, yep, yeah. so storytelling, blah, blah, blah. Um, so all of the piece of armor that he has is armors that either he had before he became a frog or armor that he found throughout his quests. Um, but um, I'm still considering that he's in a like human world, right? So 
probably that like his gloves, since he has three fingers, uh, well, this is like, I, I don't necessarily know that like if frog has like four fingers and stuff, let's just see. Well, yeah, yeah. See, like technically frog has like four fingers. Uh, I actually wanted him to be, to have three fingers. I just like it more in terms of like shake shape equilibrium, let's say. Um, but um yeah technically if he has three fingers it, it basically means that he cannot be wearing um like he can't wear uh a human uh human clothing let's say uh thanks for the follow uh well human gloves let's say some of the clothing may be right but the gloves like nobody has three fingers right so basically it it means that like the gloves will have to look like handmade that's kind of like a pun right the gloves are handmade kind of it, it tickles by fancy this one as well I like the apex pecs the apex pec um but yeah, so so like I will not be able to make gloves that look really like w too well done. Like they will have to look like a bit like, um, like not necessarily badly sewn necessarily, but just like not pristine or whatever. Like his armor is stuff that like might be decaying, but like we're are still were made by like a real blacksmith and stuff and uh, an an elegant one for for um for some of the armors that he's going to have so yeah the gloves are going to need to be to look like uh more handmade basically so you see that's kind of like a uh, thinking where the character comes from that sort of stuff so that's a kind of like a storytelling decision or a decision that's based on the story of the character let's say uh, he is from the Simpson universe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, not your best one, Mark. Come on, it was not that bad. It was not that bad. <laughs> it would be funny if he had five, five, five finger gloves with a four finger hand and an empty finger hanging. Actually, that could be really funny. If I was to make like more of a comical piece, uh, that would totally be like a a funny thing. Like one of his finger just looks like an empty condom or something. <laughs> it's, it's fucking gross. Um, all right. So uh, yeah. All right. I don't even know what I want to what I want to do in terms of like the types of gloves, and I haven't really done any like research about like. Yeah, I guess I'm going to uh, keep it pretty, pretty. S well, also at the same time, like he's going to have like, um, like not string, but um, geez, how do you call that? Wow, I have a blank. Corde. That's the word in French, corde. What's corde in English? Rope. There we go. Wow. So I just a blank right there. Like he's going to have rope. Um, yeah, there we go. Thanks. Uh, I Odin. And he's going to have like rope um, around the uh, the gloves. So, uh, yeah. yep. So it, I don't really need to actually like think about like how it's going to be built and whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Um, perfect. Perfect. Let's go with that. But am I gonna want it to go higher on the arm because it's pretty low right now? So maybe like it just a bit higher. And I think I'm gonna have to place the 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 rope. See, I was gonna say string again, uh, or cord. I think maybe cord is something. I think that. And people are using that word in English, cord or rope. I know that cord with a H is like a guitar cord. That's something else, though. Moi, je dis on switch en français. C'est le Québec, c'est Québec pride right here, eh? 
Yeah, I'm proud to be a proud to be a Quebecer as well. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, corn. There you go. Uh, all right. Right now, that looks like surgical glove, but um, after placing the rope and adding some folds and stuff like that, it's gonna it's gonna look better for sure. Um, but you see, I don't even know what kind of uh, yeah. You know what? I think I'll need to go with the flow. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's add some cord around all of that. Uh, I have a little alpha here that uh, I don't remember where I got it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Cedric made it. Um, no, it's not here. Whoops. That is a bullet that I created a long time ago to make a bullet belt. Um, let's get back to where is that? Oh, right there. Yeah. Torsad. It's definitely Cedric created it if it's actually named something in French. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'll be using this, and if I use it with shift, it goes around the glove, but there is a disconnect here that it's kind of weird. Um, the one with the open end here is it going to act to work better. Yeah, okay. It actually is merging with itself. So, um, all right. So technically, the, the the true way of placing this cord, <laughs> this uh, rope around the the arm, would be to like truly, actually like follow like a, a real movement and create like one rope going all around. But because um, I'm not really going to show the back of this character. I don't care for cheating a little bit and just making a sequence of a sequence of um rings, let's say. Uh is this a rope too big? My rope is too big. I think it's like the fourth time that I make that reference. I see that that's better. Is it? Yeah, I think that's better. All right. So let's just place them and then I'll uh, calibrate them. Oops, wrong side. For some reason, it's like better that I actually place them on the hidden side. Too much. Come on, that's not even how the ring was placed. Don't be an asshole. There you go. Mm. Did I put enough glove? Nah, it should have been higher. Mm, too angled. Hmm, I don't really like how it's he's choosing. It's, it's choosing the um, all right. Well, the last one has to be a little bit more straight, though.
All right, and the last rope. Ah, I lost my the size. What size was it? Too big. Too small. This one is just the right size. Okay, references after references. Uh, thanks for the follow, by the way. Okay, right, really, like, the angle is really not good right now. Yeah, that's the that's more like it. Uh, it's whatever, I'll just place it by hand then. Jesus. All right. Whoop. Oh, that's not even the right size. I lied. I think that's going to be the good one. Oops. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's okay. But it's not Ah. You know what? I don't even know what I'm why I'm fighting so much against that. I can just do a duplicate of this here. All right. Est-ce que c'est des gants de vaisselle? Uh, it's whatever you want, dude. It's whatever you want. Uh, who are your favorite bosses in the Souls series? Ooh, my favorite in the Souls series. Okay, so um, question before I, I start. Um, how far do we extend Soul? Does it have to be just Dark Souls? Can it be Bloodborne? Can it be Elden Ring? Can it be Demon Souls? Am I going crazy? What the fuck's happening? What is happening here? This one is... Huh. What's... Why are these merged together? That is so weird. I don't think that I wanted to do that. So I will actually just recreate them using a uh, All right, um all of the games uh Nameless King, all right. And okay, and by the way, uh, when you say favorite, do you mean uh, favorite in terms of like their design or favorite in terms of uh, like just like the fun factor of fighting them? Um, like what you had in mind? I might just like decide to talk about something, but I just like I at least want to give you like the opportunity to uh, give me like some parameters here.
No, I, I miscalculated something here. All right, so I'll just take your, uh, your you could say both. All right. Um, okay, let's go. Let's start with design in terms of like just the look. Um, well, one of my favorite is uh, Artorius. He's um, he's very like in a sense he's very like typical knight ish kind of character, uh, but hey, it's pretty cool, pretty cool design. I just really like it. So uh, it's a pretty um, that's a pretty good one. Um, I also like the Soul of Cinders. I uh, the last boss of Dark Souls Three. I I, th I think it's a pretty cool uh it's a pretty cool design as well. Um but I don't know I don't I'm not saying this is my top 5. I'm just like shooting names. Um Abrietas from Bloodborne the crazy alien is a pretty cool one as well. Pontiff Sullivan's pretty cool. Pontiff Sullivan is the boss that I actually had the hardest time to beat. When I actually, um, like, not anymore, but like when I met him for the first time, I remember like having like such a hard time beating him. Um, in terms of like um of um gameplay it's going to be a lot of like the bosses from Sekiro because for me Sekiro was the um the game with the, the most fun um gameplay style so like the fight with um oh I forgot his last name Ichi Ich well the the last boss of Sekiro um that was a pretty cool fight. Um, the one with Genikiro as well. That's some solid stuff. The first time you meet him, that's where you realize like, oh, that game is not playing. That was such an epic fight. Yeah, oh yeah, the, the fighting in that game, that was like, oh my god, that was the best. That was the best. I loved it. And in terms of like the, uh, the Souls game, I remember having like such a hard time with um with um in Bloodborne with L Lauren the first vicar is that his name Lawrence the first vicar something like that in the the, the church and the the expansion and in the DLC I remember having like a really hard time with this one but it it, it made for like a really thrilling fight as well uh, Ludwig was actually also a really cool battle. There's a, a bat, um, one boss that I found that was hard, but just not fun. Hard and not fun uh, was... Um, what's his name? Makir? Like the, the, the man-eater? Well, the, 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 the dragon in the last DLC of Dark Souls 3. I found that this one was not really fun, actually. It was a lot of, like, just, like, slapping his ankles and avoiding when he actually does his, like, huge radius blast. It just, for me, it was, like, a lot of rinse and repeat that I did not super appreciate. All right, so I just created a shell to actually have like at least just like one one edge inside like this and I'm actually going to cap it with close hole like this.
and I'm going to make my little like trick to create like um like folds. Maybe I should have um made the gloves even longer. Hey, I'm starting to realize that uh I should have made those gloves much longer than that. Because I want to use my little trick afterwards. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually going to recreate the topology just for this section here because it's starting to be a bit stretched. There we go. All right. And now that this is done, I will collapse those into layers and use my little brush cloth hook there we go cloth hook to create the those kind of like folds here actually i'm going to create myself a morph target in case i want to come back um nameless king was like a pretty good fight as well i remember it was like it was kind of like not too frustrating but pretty hard it was nice i liked it uh, Gale also was uh, was cool. I liked it. In uh, when I did my uh, Souls level one run in uh, Dark Souls three, I remember like the 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 hardest boss for me was um, well the, the dancer of the Boreal Valley was really hard. Um, the twin, the Lothric twins were super hard as well. And the Lord of uh, the, the the Lord of Cinder was pretty damn hard when he was one of his mode of attack. The one with the curved sword was uh, really fucking hard. All right, cloth hook. Come on, give me something interesting. Ah, you see, that's actually. Uh, Maybe I'll need to rework the, the strings around it, but you see that's kind of like a fun little like effect that I got right there. I can probably... Uh... Yeah, for uh, for a lot of like clothing parts, now I, I don't even like consider using Marvelous. Uh, sometimes for some aspects, but I just find that like uh, you can do like some pretty neat things uh, with uh, cloth hook. Huh? And I'll also work on. Uh, Yeah, anyways. Um great pick. Yeah. Mine are probably Ludwig the Holy Blade who has the best music in the series. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a super nice one. Yeah, Slave Knight Gale also. Yeah. Fun that's a really fun fight for sure. Uh, FPS destroying boss. Yeah. Dark Eater mid -year. that's what I yeah, that's the one I meant. Uh, the dancer, the dancer is really floating. It's really hard to read. Yeah, exactly. Plus, when you're doing a Souls level one run, uh, she has like uh, he or she, whatever, has like um, many um, one hit kills attack, and it's pretty damn hard because she's really hard to read. Like one reason is because she's outside of the screen so much, but also she just has like those weird floaty, liquidy movements. All right, now let's uh, play with the the strings just to uh, kind of like find like a position with the folds. Do 
do they have different yeah they, they all have different uh oops okay uh, actually you know what it, the, the the topology of those is so heavy that like there's one thing i'm going to do is actually i'm going to just uh z remesh this because it's a bit uh extreme right now wow it's going to take that much time really it's going to take that much time god well oh, that's ridiculous i'm not okay man it got faster Wow, that is not enough topology. Okay, first of all, let's erase one side. Ooh, that side is not okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the side I want. All right. And um, you know what? I'm actually going to dynamish this. Oops, keeping my groups though. There we go. And I find it probably going to make the Z modeler just a little bit faster. Let's go with 4K. See, it's already Z modeler is going faster just because I dynameshed it a little bit before. Oh, you see, that's going to be a decent topology, I think, here. See, if I subdivide it and uh, inflate it a bit, I think this will be good. Let's uh, erase the subdivisions, mirror and weld, recreate the subdivisions. Reinsert this here. All right. I'm going to want to have a uh, different poly groups for each um, ropes or loops because I want to be able to use move with uh, mask by poly group so that I can just like move one at a time like this. Yeah, I'm going to remove that that rope. All right, all right. All right, and I'll see if I can actually just squeeze the folds with the uh, with the rope now. 
Is it going to look good if I just squeeze them like this? So far, so good. I might need to rework some of the folds, but so far, so good. All right, that's a good first pass. I can actually start uh, polish this a bit. Pistol beat. Ma t'arrange ça c'est fold le mon est tu vas voir tu vas chier tes culottes. I just told Pete that he's going to love the folds that I'm doing so much that he's going to shit his pants. <laughs> Bear belly armor. <laughs> yeah. What was his uh, what, what was his name again? I don't remember the name of the guy. Anyways. Lionel Seth, yeah, there you go. So Pete, um how's your uh faux making skill? Fa making skill. Oh, or fa, fa, I think. Anyways, are you a fa master now? Have you cracked a recipe? Cracked a code? Nice. It's been ages that I suck at a fall in any. I'm not super happy of the results everywhere.
Hey, thanks for the follow. Yeah, well, you know what? That's on my list now. Have some of your pho. You should ship me some. <laughs> like, like in a bag, plastic bag. Oh, it's because I had the, uh,
Hmm. Once again, the ropes are not. Or oh, are they symmetrical? Is it my gloves that are not symmetrical? Well, I think it is. Let's fix that with smart symmetry. Boom. There we go. I have pit frogs at home. We have tadpoles growing into froglets. Kind of makes me think it'd look cool with a kind of froglet sidekick. It's protecting. <laughs> yeah, that could be cool. Derek. Hello, Mark, my friend. Hello, hello. Uh, we have a frog that pops out around the window every so often with a missing eye. Oh, no. Is it? It's maybe my character that is in real life. I wished him into existence. Uh, all right, all right, all right. For that part of the uh, the glove, it's kind of like what I was going for, so we're good. And now for the inside part of the glove, probably not going to end up doing something really complex because the the left arm is going to be hidden by armor, and the right arm, sorry. His right arm is going to be hidden by armor, and his left arm, I'm going to, like, close the hand around the sword. So, uh, I think I'll just do, like, a, a quick pass. Quick pass at it. But before that, I, I might actually want to just accentuate some folds in the silhouette. Just to give it more like, yeah, silhouette and dynamism and whatever. Ah, oh, forgot once again. Smart symmetry. Come on. You're tired, you need to see the dough. Rock and roll beat. Talk to you soon. Yeah, actually, geez, I didn't even look at the time. My god. I think I'm gonna stop this here. Yeah, that's probably a good time for me as well, because, uh, yeah. I'm maybe going to put in a little 30 minutes of uh, Tina's Wonderland and uh, then I'll uh, I'll go to bed. But uh, yeah, that's cool. We worked on the head a little bit. Started to separate some of the objects and whatnot. So um, yep, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yep, let's call it. Let's call it a night with, with that done. Woo! All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining once again. That was a pretty good, uh, pretty fun uh, session. So uh, yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's not raid anyone tonight. Uh, let's just keep it simple. All right. Thanks for joining everyone. It was pretty great. 
uh, Marco Bluff Sculpt Soiree, another major success. Major success. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> so, no, anyways, thanks for joining, and uh, I'm going to see you very soon, I hope, on another, another Sculpt Soiree. All right. Take care, everyone.